for a speed round? Okay. Da, 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 da. You guys, you guys want some HD questions? At McLean, I, these are all submitted over Twitter. Uh, <laughs> take that for what it's worth. <laughs> At McLean73 <laughs> asks, is HD 3D going to take off or flop? Uh, it'll flop. It'll flop. Yeah, big it, time. It'll be. There will be some things everyone will want to see. Right. But it isn't going to be the norm. Okay. I'm, I'm more along the lines of. Uh, you don't need 3D for a great movie, although you could have some fun with certain movies and content in seeing that in a 3D experience. Our, our buddy Ben over at Engadget HD raves over sports. Yeah. He says sports is the killer application for 3D HD movies. You know, it, even even Roger Ebert's back slam of 3D for movies again. I will say that the 3D experience in the movie theater will continue mm -hmm. to be a draw for a lot of people. That's going to be the highest quality venue for looking at 3D, even over what you see in the home. Right. Although the new home products are there to tempt you. They are. <laughs> Speaking of which, at Scott DMS, how well do the 3D TVs do 2D? Are they on par with a comparable LED or LCD flat panel? They're, they're the cream of the crop. They right. are the, the current 3D TV models that are available today from Panasonic and Samsung are their, are their top of the line models. They are the best in terms of uh, picture quality, performance, feature sets. They basically added that 3D function just to make it the, the, the super premium model of that of the current time right now. So, so the same or better? Yeah. Okay. Uh, eventually, you're going to see next year, everyone's premium 3D TV. Everyone's premium TV will be a 3D capable model. Right. It's just going to be one of those check mark features. Is it, does it have the 3D built in? <laughs> sure. You may never use it, but it'll be ready for exactly. it. At not Ash would ask, what are your favorite projectors in the $5,000 to $10,000 price range? Ooh, ooh, I have to say this. For DLP, it would be the single chip Samsung product that has mm -hmm. Joe Kane's stamp of approval. That is the, arguably the finest single chip DLP projector I've seen. Otherwise, I am. I'm thinking maybe some of the higher end. I don't think there's a three chip DLP projector for that price range anywhere. Mm -hmm. So then I would probably consider something like a three LCD projector or, oh, I take it back. I'd go right to JVC and get probably their three chip uh, DILA technology. I think it's DLA. It's a liquid crystalline silicon technology. Three chip system, 1080p projection, excellent black levels. For about 7,500 bucks, you get one of their entry level projectors. 65 to $7,500, that would make a phenomenal display. And, right. and uh, the, the JVC technology is the core for a lot of other third-party premium projectors, too. They actually buy the chips from JVC and use them in their own hardware. So cool. some of the ultra-premium projectors lines I've seen. But those are my favorite projectors of all. I have to say the JVC stuff. If you can see it in person, you suddenly want to write another zero on that check. And it's like, okay, I understand. <laughs> just just give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> Softball question? <laughs> sure. Sierra Photog asks, what are the minimum HDTV requirements for Blu-ray? Uh, you know what? You can hook a Blu-ray player up to pretty much any TV. So right. uh, you got to have a player. component or HDMI, HDC. Yeah, I mean, you could even take the, the standard def out if you really want to pulverize that Blu-ray experience and connect that to any old TV. But I, I'm going to say component or actually yeah. no, take it back. Not even component. HDMI. I'd get it at this point. Yeah. yeah. HDMI with HDCP, or you're not going to get full 1080p. A 1080p resolution TV mm -hmm. of some kind. Hopefully, 32 inches or larger, and that that'd be the bare minimum for the display requirement. And that way, uh, with 1080p, you can for every 1080p TV I've seen, you can do that one-to-one -one pixel mapping. So you can output 1080p right. to the TV, have it displayed in a one-to-one -one pixel mode, so you get maximum detail and clarity. Uh, you can always get better performance in terms of things like contrast and pixel performance, color performance by spending more on the display. But at least a 1080p monitor, if you can do the 120 hertz or better, sure, do that as well. Because then you can. <laughs> Not for smoothing, right. but for frame repeating to give it that that cinema look. He knows that I, you expect I in the, the, the in the movie theater. Hey, <laughs> at Edenams, Edenams asks, "What do you think about the new yellow pixels added to sharp televisions?" I I was I had mixed feelings when I first heard it. I was like, "Why? Why do you need yellow particularly?" To expand the color gamut, to give a more realistic interpretation of HD I, colors. Realistic is to be. <laughs> That's subjective. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what I actually met with Sharp last week. Uh, we had a nice little meeting here in San Francisco, and they had a couple of their brand new sets set up, and we were going over the why and the how for. I will say on their side of it, they're, they're creating a picture that's going to grab your attention in the store. Mm -hmm. that, that addition of yellow gives it an expanded color gamut beyond what we really need. I mean, it can display more colors than are available in any video signal you're going to get from any source device But today. they're there. But if you there. need them. So if you like an extra colorful picture, <laughs> That would definitely be a set to incorporate. But beyond that, the Quatron technology, they call it for sharp TVs, it incorporates their latest panel technology, though, that I think is far more interesting. Uh, two things about it. One, they have a new crystal alignment uh, mm -hmm. function or feature when they're actually building the plant. When they put the liquid crystal material on there, they're able to control specifically the alignment of those crystals so mm -hmm. precise now that they're, they're blocking light. When they display black now, 
it's sealing that, that light output much better than it used to. So the oh, contrast is literally ju taking a significant jump up. And the aperture of the individual pixels, too, the, they call this collectively their Gen X panel technology, <laughs> the aperture, the size of the individual pixels has been increased. So one of the benefits of both of those combined together would be that when Sharp finally gets around to putting out their own 3D TV, mm -hmm. it may be brighter than any of the other LCD 3D TVs that are currently oh, out there. Just because you have that, that, that fourth channel, that yellow, Adding additional light to the output of the panel itself, but I'm not. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I haven't had one in the lab yet. I'm waiting. They're, they're going to send us one to get it in. I want to see though. Can I color correct it to the point where it could be a perfect reference display? That's the unknown question. I, the controls are there. Will they do it? We'll find out. At WD Fleming asks, who makes the best Netflix streaming device? Like Roku, PC, PS3, ACTV, widgets. What do you like the best? So right now, Roku, PS3, or Xbox. I'd say the game consoles. The the the. PS3 and the 360, just because of the performance, when you're scrolling through your selections and the menu system and speed and all of that, it's a very seamless environment to be playing with that interface in. Overpowered console running the Netflix software is awesome. How about the new Blu-ray players that have Netflix built in? Those should be great. Uh, I haven't. You should get full quality because mm -hmm. it's a set-top box device and not a PC. So it's not really a quality standpoint. It's more of a convenience. If it's something you already have. You're set, no reason to buy another device, but <laughs> I, I'm really looking forward to seeing that in a TV here. And all the new 10,000, or the, some of the new 2010 TVs all have, uh, or have those internet-capable features, including Netflix.